So right now, what I am doing is weaving with what is called a color and weave technique. So normally when you do this, you'll have your different colors in the warp and in the weft, but because this is Saori weaving, it typically is done with a black warp. So I'm changing colors only in the weft and I'm alternating every other row. There are lots of different patterns that you could do for color and weave. You could do dark, dark, light, 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 dark. You, the sequences can become very, very complex. Um, that's where you get your herringbone patterns, your, um, your pinwheel patterns, um, a lot of really interesting but fairly simple weaves can be done just by changing the colors of your yarn. So as I'm doing this, it's pretty simple. You're just using two shuttles and alternating them every other row. But because of this weave structure, I want to make sure to lock the yarn around itself so the two yarns sort of loop around each other before they go through. And that keeps me from having a long unwoven thread at the selvages. So if you see me sort of juggling the shuttles, what I'm doing is making sure that the yarn has locked around itself or its friend to make sure that I get all of those edges taken care of. So my pink yarn, which is this one right here, I'm weaving on a shacked end feed shuttle, which is designed to help you get really even salvages. And it also has the benefit of being able to hold lots and lots of yarn. It does have a limit on the weight of yarn. This yarn is fairly fine. This is an 8-2 cotton. And on this boat shuttle, I have some of my hand spun. And that yarn is from Hummingbird Moon, who is an indie dyer. And she dyes fiber and yarn. This is, um, it is a Polworth silk blend. I bought it as fiber from her and spun it and it just has so many different colors in it it creates this really lovely variegated yarn and one of the benefits of color and weave that I really really like is that it really helps me extend the effects of one yarn so from just one small bobbins worth of this yarn, I probably got woven um, maybe two or three feet of fabric. Um, so that definitely goes a lot farther than in knitting. And as you can see, the effect of a variegated yarn is going to be very different in weaving than it might be in knitting. You're still going to get some of these pooling spots, but they're, um, I find them to be more subtle and definitely more interesting than than in knitting. And that's my that's my preference. You might enjoy it in, in knitting as well. But this is what the yarn looks like in a skein. So there's just lots of different colors there, which is really fun. So it's time for me to advance the warp. So you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pressing a lever to make that loosen up and then I'll tighten it back up and advance it a little bit more so that I'll have plenty of room to weave and get going again.